I want to show you how we can clean up images and get rid of distracting objects using a bit of Lightroom. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Since we're working with a very contrasty scene before we can start cleaning things up, we want to merge the HDR image. So down below, select the bracketed sequence, these five images right here, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. We don't need to change anything here. Once the preview has loaded, just hit the merge button. Lightroom will then create a new file, which is our HDR image on which we can now work. And before I start removing objects, I want to first get the base image right. And this also helps spot some of these distracting objects a bit easier. So let us expand the basic panel. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because I want this image to be vibrant and this profile helps boosting the base saturation already. Then this image is super dark at the moment. I'm going to fix that by bringing up the exposure right around here looks great. I don't want to push the exposure too much because then I will have a harder time fixing the highlights. Another thing we can do to save details from the darkest areas is to raise the shadows and we can also raise the blacks. Of course, doing this will reveal details, but we will also lose contrast, but that's not a big deal because we can always introduce back some contrast. But first, let me bring down the highlights so we can reveal some more details in the very bright areas of the sky around the sun. This is looking pretty good. At this point, let's also increase the contrast slider just a little bit to give this image back some punch. All right, exposure wise, it looks fine. Now we want to adjust the white balance since we can see things a little more clearly now. I'm going to bring up the temperature because I want to have this, these very strong sunset colors and increasing the temperature just helps introducing some more warmth to the shot. This is looking great. Then let's also add a bit of texture. Then I do want to add some kind of autumn glow effect. Therefore I'm dropping the clarity and I'm also going to drop the dehaze very carefully. Wonderful. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance for some more saturation. Okay, that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see color-wise, we do have a much stronger, warmer sunset look. Of course, the colors are a little bit too much, especially on the warmer side of things, but we are going to target these colors separately later in the editing process. What I want to do now is I want to get rid of a few of these distracting objects. And Adobe has added something kind of like the generative fill that is available to us in Photoshop. For that, we want to head into the remove tool. You can also press the Q key or click this icon right here. The remove tool comes with three different modes. Here we have the clone mode, the heal brush and the remove tool. For this purpose, obviously we want to use this remove tool. Here you can already see I have checked the generative AI checkbox, which makes it a lot easier to remove unwanted objects. Also, I'm going to activate the object aware checkbox. And this tool tries to automatically detect objects when you brush over them. So this should make things easy as well. And then of course we can adjust the brush size and the opacity. I'm setting the opacity to 100 and the brush size to five. So the brush isn't too big. Now let's start with something simple. By using the mouse wheel, I can also adjust the brush size even further. I'm going to remove these tiny objects in the back. So I'm going to make the brush a little smaller by using the mouse wheel. And I'm just going to paint over these boats and I'm making sure to get the reflection as well. And once this is done, Lightroom will analyze the scene. Now, because we have checked in the detect object checkbox, you see the selection might not be perfect, but we can try anyway. Once we made our selection, let's hit apply. Obviously this will take a while because everything with a generative AI is a little bit slower, but this is looking good. Now let's continue. Let's try something else. I'm going to further work on the right side. Actually, let's deselect object aware this time. And I'm going to just brush over these boats once more. Just a very rough selection here. At this point, I want to select even more. 
and we can do that using the mask refinement and selecting the add button right here. So I'm just going to continue brushing over a few things here. Let's also target this boat right behind the pillar. Okay, and now let's hit apply and see what Lightroom will be doing. Now you can see Lightroom has created some very strange objects. However, we can use different variations of the fill that has been added right here, but simply by making use of these arrows. So let's check out the next one. And actually you can see Lightroom does have issues trying to get rid of these boats. Let's turn back on object aware and try it one more time. And hopefully we can fix it this time. Okay, then one more time hit apply. It's looking better, not perfect, but the boats are gone. Let's check out the different variations once more to see if there's anything better. And I think I'm going with the third variation. Now you can clearly see there are still some leftovers right here. So I'm just trying to paint over them again and hopefully we can fix it this time if nothing else helps. I can always go back to Photoshop. Just be aware, I have a feeling Lightroom is not that precise as removing these objects, even with something like generative AI. So let's give it a try one more time here. And this is looking much, much better. So you can see if you have problems with removing objects in a nice way, just brush over them with the remove tool a few times until you get something that looks natural. Okay, now that we have worked on the right side, let's also clean up the person sitting on the jetty, just brushing over it like this. And I'm also going to remove a few objects on the left side. Okay, let's see what Lightroom will do in this case. That is actually looking not too bad. Still, we can see some very funny looking things. I'm just going to brush over them once more and let's see how Lightroom will fix those. All right, looking better as well. I also want to get rid of that pillar right here and hopefully this will work as well. Let's see. And we can try to get rid of lens flares. So right here in the bottom left corner, you can see some. For that, I'm going to uncheck the object aware box and I'm just going to brush over these areas right here. And let's hope Lightroom will detect it. And just like that, we have cleaned up the lens flare. So as you can see, the remove tool works quite nice for removing smaller distracting objects. It's far from perfect. If you want to have the best image quality, of course, you still want to remove objects with way more advanced tools in Photoshop. Still, it's a great starting point and it can be really, really helpful. Now let's finish editing this image. I'm going to continue with a bit of masking and right away, let me create a color range mask for the blue part of the sky up here. I also want to target the left side of the blue sky. So I'm holding down the shift key with the eyedropper still active and click in here to also target this area. Okay, that's looking good. I want to bring down the refine slider so we don't affect the clouds too much. All right. And then I'm going to say subtract linear gradient and take out all of the foreground like this. Now with this selection, I'm going to bring down the exposure, making the blue part of the sky darker and thus we're adding contrast to the sky. Then let me create a radial gradient for the center part of the image right here, because I think this area could use some more brightness. Therefore, let me bring up the whites. At the same time, we could use some contrast. So I'm going to bring down the shadows and I'm adding some contrast with this contrast slider. All right, looking good. Then let's use a radial gradient to target the area around the sun because here we can add some nice glow effect. Therefore, let's bring up the blacks. I want to keep the glow very subtle, so I'm not going too crazy with these sliders. I'm also going to bring up the whites very gently so the sun will get a little brighter as well. Okay, let's also work on the jetty in the foreground. I'm using the object selection tool and I'm making sure the rectangle mode is selected right here. With this active, I can simply draw a rectangle around the jetty like this. And you can see we get a perfect selection right here. I do want to add one more object selection mask and I'm going to select this pillar on the left. 
Now, what I want to do for the jetty is to reduce the temperature because at the moment this looks a little too warm and yellowish. And I'm also going to drop the tint. So we are kind of neutralizing the color cast in the jetty, giving it a more natural look. Okay, one more thing we need to do here is to bring down the saturation so the yellows aren't as harsh as they were before. Let's bring it down even further. All right. Then I want to further work on the sky, therefore I'm using a sky selection mask. To be more precise, I want to work on the bright part of the sky on the right side. Let's also subtract a linear gradient from in that sky mask for that purpose, since we only want to target this bright area. And what I want to do in here is to further bring up the blacks, making this area brighter. I also want to bring up the whites. And I want to bring up the exposure. Making this area brighter just helps making the light look a bit more natural. Okay, and finally, I want to use a radial gradient for that bright part on the right and simply bring down the saturation. Okay, that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before. Here we have the image with the basic adjustments applied. You can see the colors are way too strong at this point, but we have nicely fixed it with some targeted adjustments. So now we can focus a bit on the color grading. I am going to head into the color mixer first. And let's start with the hue. I want to make the warmer tones look a bit more orange. Therefore, I'm going to drop the orange hue. I'm also going to drop the yellow hue quite a bit. And I'm not sure if you can spot it, but there are some strange green tones up here in the sky. These are super distracting to me. So we can fix that quite easily by bringing down the green hue. And this will make the green tones in the sky look yellow. And thus it fits the sunset. I'm also going to bring down the blue hue, giving especially the sky more of a cyan color, color tone, which I think looks great for this scene. Okay, but then we also need to adjust the saturation, especially of the blue tones, which I want to tone down a notch. Actually, let's go back to the hue tab and bring down the purple hue as well, because there is, there is some banding going on in the sky. I might want to bring up the blue hue a little further to counter this effect. So we're getting rid of the banding, which we have introduced ourselves by bringing down the blue hue this way. Let's go back into the saturation tab. I want to bring up orange and I want to drop yellow and green. And by doing this, I'm just balancing out the saturation of the different color tones, giving in this image a more pleasing look. All right, we can also do some split toning for some heavier color grading. I want to use the highlights and of course make them, make them warmer. So I'm setting up the hue first somewhere in the yellow range to fit the sunset colors. And I'm going to bring up the saturation. Let's raise it a lot because I think it looks really, really good with those intense sunset colors. Then for the midtones, I'm going with the opposite color tone. So I'm going to set up the hue with a cold color tone. And I'm going to bring up the saturation slightly less than with the highlights. And I'm doing this to to create color contrast between the warm highlights and the colder midtones. So it's just about the balance here. Finally, some more color grading in the calibration tab. Here, all I'm doing is to bring down the blue primary hue. This again will help adding some more cyan tones to the sky. And overall, it also makes the warmer tones look much better in my opinion. Then let's bring up the saturation, boosting the color some more. And that's it for the color grading. Finally, some sharpening in the details tab. Here, I'm going to drop the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I will be adding some masking while holding down the Alt key. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the finished image after using GS, a bit of Lightroom editing. Now, as I said earlier, if you want to have better image quality after removing objects, you want to remove the objects in Photoshop still. However, Lightroom can be a great tool if you're feeling overwhelmed with all these Photoshop tools. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful and interesting. 
If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.